Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rural World Analytics, or What Schools Don't Teach You. This is the second installment of my Kaggle series. I've decided to enter my first ever Kaggle competition, and I'm using this vlog as a means of documenting my journey. If you'd like to start at the beginning, for it's a very good place to start, and watch the first episode, they'll put a, there'll be a link in the description below. I'll link to it at the end of this. But if you're not a total beginner in terms of R Markdown and Shiny, you should be fine here. As a general overview to the problem statement, Kaggle has given out a survey. They've received about 24,000 responses, and your job as a Kaggle competitor is to find some segment of the survey respondent population and comment on it. And because that's ill-defined, I want to use Shiny as a way to iterate through possible segments and in discussions with stakeholders, really nail down what's interesting and what's not. I'll put a copy of my code here. It is our markdown. The big difference is that it has this runtime shiny option. And from that option, I can uh, go through things iteratively. By and large, that's what the first episode was about. So if I run this document and do this, uh, note it's run the document, not knit the document, which is the big difference because it has runtime shiny. So like other R Markdown, it's this combination of code and text. And it, the big difference in terms of the preliminaries that, I, that I've incorporated in this version rather than the first version is that I have this reactive value. And note that I first check to see if it exists. And if not, I initialize it. And otherwise, there might be some information in there and I don't want to overwrite it. Note that the number of plots is, starts out as zero. And then I have this interactive analysis. All this code will be on GitHub, so don't try to read it all now. Unlike the previous one where I just had an input panel and a couple of rendered plots and a data table, I now have a full Shiny app here. And the idea is I have these two plots, both in terms of numbers and percentages. I have drop-down menus about what different variables you'd like to see. So here I've got a list of countries here and the color is by gender. And as before, I have a data table of all the data down beneath it. So the idea here is I want to go through this and I want to find something that's interesting. So you may ask the question, well, is there a more equality in gender for the younger generation? The answer here is sort of, yes, we're still a far cry from 50%, but at least in the 22 to 24, there is the greatest representation of survey respondents identifying as female. So you may find that interesting. And if not, let's have the discussion. Let's find something else that's interesting to you, to another stakeholder, to the representatives at Kaggle, to a meeting room, to whomever. So then I have my initial findings as presented in the first vid video. I won't go over them again. And then I have this space for custom findings. Note that uh, adaptive RV, RV is reactive value, and I'm checking to see if it's zero. And if so, I print this line here. But if it's not zero, that's where things get interesting. And the basic idea is because I don't know what my stakeholders will find interesting, I want to give the ability to generate this stuff on the fly. This is what I mean by adaptive documentation. So let's say for sake of argument, this graph is interesting. If I hit the document button, it comes up with that graph and it says here to write something about your plot. I can give it a caption and then I'll document it. Now I'm going to type in some information here and I'm going to pause the video while I do that. And I'm back. So here I've written that there's a greater representation of women in, in the younger age groups, which we can see from the plot. And I've given a, a caption that the fraction of respondents peaks in 22 to 24 range here. So when I hit the document button, at first it seems like nothing's happened because the way our markdown works is it's rendered this, this document beforehand based on what information was in memory then. But now I've changed my reactive value. That is to say, now my now I have one plot and it's the plot up there of uh, age and gender. So now when I reload the document, it's going to now use that updated value. And there's the text that I wrote with the caption that I've given it. And here's my plot. So this was my basic idea. Rather than having a 
set of information that I find interesting, I don't want to write up what you find interesting because I haven't spoken to you about it. But I want to sit down with my stakeholders, discuss things, find things that are interesting, record some text about it. Now, this could be an entire paragraph if I wanted. I don't know how to get rid of that one. If anyone knows how, I'd appreciate it. Caption all my, my plots and build this up iteratively so that if we found four or five different segments, build out more capabilities so that I can look at finer and finer subsets of the population. I can add facets to this. I can have different plots by all the other variables in my survey so I can have something very high level like this, which is just age and gender, or I can have age and gender by programming language. I can cut this as finely as I'd like because that's kind of the problem statement. So I got all this working and I went to Kaggle uploaded the code, got everything in and running. And unfortunately, when I then run it, I get this. So the idea of having a shiny app where I can interact with things, unfortunately, it compiles the HTML. And that's where I sit. Because now I have this HTML document to do everything interactively, but it comes up as an HTML document. Even though it's rendered in my browser, it doesn't run the HTML, we could say. Instead, it just say, here's the web page that you would be seeing, and it doesn't look like this. Now, this I find kind of bittersweet because on the one hand, it kind of proves my point. As I'm entering this Kaggle competition, it gives me the option to use our markdown. It gives me the option for GPU acceleration. I've got some completely overpowered machine on the back end of my Kaggle entry. But in terms of making something that makes it easy to interact with stakeholders, it's impossible. This was my whole point upon making this is there's this disconnect between management and data scientists that as a data scientist, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do the data science and I'm going to find insights and I'm going to throw them over the wall to management and management's going to look at them and decide whether or not they agree with me or not. And then I'm going to need to go back and do it again. I'm trying to reduce that down in my first kind of sponsor talk at Microsoft called breaking the bottleneck. That's the entire point. And I wanted to go through that point with my submission that I shouldn't be doing things and it shouldn't be reviewed in a background that we need to be doing these things together, whether it's data scientist to data scientist, management to data scientist, management to management. And so rather than build the documentation, I want to build the tools to build the documentation, which is a little inception if you want, but I don't have the vanity or the pride to say, no, no, I know what the most what the most important part of your survey responses are. I will tell you, but rather I want to be able to be the person who understands the data and who can build the interface to the data so that we can create this document together. And I was going to talk about how to further refine this in terms of including extra variables, in terms of filtering my variables, but unfortunately, the uh, this isn't going to work, which makes me sad. It is kind of a, an insight into my professional life because every time I build these shiny apps, it all looks really good. I get management really excited, and then it becomes time to deploy it, and it doesn't work because you get things like this. There's nowhere to serve it, etc. So be it. So that kind of concludes episode two. I am still going to enter this competition. I'm going to enter it from the country perspective because that's what's important to me. But it comes kind of with this bad taste in my mouth because I don't know if other people are going to find country interesting. And I was going to build all of the infrastructure to explore whatever aspect people find interesting. And instead, I just can't. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that this idea means something to you, this idea that you can build documents that build documents rather than just building a document. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.